Paw Patrol to the lookout, Ryder said as the six pups' tags began to flash. After a few minutes had passed, all six drowsy members were in their de- design spots, awaiting orders. Paw Patrol ready for action. Uh, Ryder, sir. Chase announced with a light yawn while wearing his spy gear. Uh, guys? What's with the moon? Zuma said as he stared out the tower windows at the red glowing sphere. The, the, that's, a, a, blood moon, tried to wobble in panic. A blood moon? Oh no, I'm really scared now. Super spy, super chase didn't sign up for this. What's a blood moon? Oh, all the puffs turned to face Marshall. What? I think the moon looks good in red, he replied happily. Bubble face palm himself. Marshall, blood moon means something bad is about to happen. Oh, replied the dally as his ears drooped. As his ears dropped. Puffs, we need to focus on the mission. Ryder announced, bringing everyone to ta- attention back. Ryder tapped his pop pad and brought up the big dis- big screen display. I received an emergency call from Mel Goodway not too long ago. She seemed really distressed. She wanted to stop crying and keep repeating Chicoletta over and over, he said while a constant image of, cr- of a crying Mel Goodway appeared on the big screen. I couldn't make it out anything else she was saying, but if I had to guess, I will say that Chicoletta must be in some kind of trouble. He pressed another button on his pup pad, and all six pup tags appeared on the screen. Since we don't have any many details, we'll go ahead and, and have all paws on, on deck just in case. Great. Now some of us won't have to be left here alone. Wubble replied, sadly relieved, getting a nod from the view of the others. All right, Pop Patrol is on a roll. Wilder shouted, pumping his fist in the air. However, right after Vinch's catchphrase, all power waiting in the lookout was expertly shot off. Those who gaze upon the moons I pass shall soon find, the night, find that night to be the last. The mysterious voice ran around the room of the lookout. Ah, I don't want to die. Bubble screamed as he ran off with tears in his eyes. Bubble, wait. Wido called out to him. Wido had enough. He sprinted, he sprinted to the slide and slid out of the lookout. Unnoticed to him, the rotation mechanism had rotated and moved Sky's pup house in the end of the slide. Sky's pup house transformed into a copter and the propeller blades began to speed at an incredible speed. The other saw from the ta- the other saw from this from the tower window and tried display, display to call out, the, uh, out to the building. Nearly the end of the slide, Bubbles' ears pick up the sound of the propeller. Ah, that's not, that's not my wig! He yelled as he eventually tried try to move his paws as fast as he could and climbed back to his slide. But to his disvantage, his paws could not grip the slide. With tears in his eyes, he called for help. Why do Wubble! The group watched in horror as fur, skin, flesh, and bones were torn apart from the bulldog's body, piece by piece, from the bottom up. When nothing was left, the prepare blaze slowed down and come to a complete stop. They were coated with blood and fleshy remains, cinnamon covered in tunnels, decorated the copter, slide, grass, and concrete. Bubbles puff tag and collar were laid on the ground. Shimmering in red, with a chunk of the bulldog's neck fur attached to it. Sky busted into a painful heart which and cry. Montrose sat with his hands on his head, eyes wide, frozen in chalk, frozen in chalk, with tears dropping down his cheeks. Rocky held his mouth and stopped himself from spearing mean vomit while tears flowed freely. Zuma and Chase were looking away, bawling their eyes out. Rido, Rido himself just stood there mournless as he dropped his pup hat to the floor. I... don't understand. How could have, how could this had happened? 
he asked, staring into space. This can't be real. He fell to his knees, covering his face with his hands, laying out the star after star. Mel Goodway was still whipping uncontrollably in the dark in the spot where this grated took away the lay. Why don't please hurry? She walked through tears. The lights began to flicker on and off again, but rapidly. Those who gaze upon the moons I pass shall soon find that night to be the last, spoke the familiar voice. No! She screamed as she went towards the front door. She tried to turn the knob, but found that it would not budge. She heard heavy footsteps coming from the kitchen. But when she turned her head, faced the direction, no one was there. She kept her eyes peered in the same direction as the footsteps sounded, and they were coming closer and closer. Made her way back up, up against the wall, against the front door, still waiting the source of the footsteps, when suddenly, they stopped. The mare was panting and breathing heavily. She closed her eyes and tried to relax her breathing to calm herself. She opened her eyes and screamed. <coughs> there before her stood a man, dressed in a pirate athlete. He had a black beard that was drenched in blood, a sharp bloody hook that was sharp munched like a curved knife, an eye patch over one eye, and the other eye was just a red, a red eyeball, which had neither else nor pupil. Before the male could finish her scream, the mysterious man cut it short as the javits hooked deep into her neck and quickly but smoothly rip it open. <laughs> Seven waves begin to spill from the male's neck, staining her, her pearly white nightgown and trackle from and trackle from her mouth while her head tilted back as it was a can't op it can't open but it can't open her. Before now left his body was able to hit the floor, the, the mysterious motor vanished.